Lord, bless the Lord. I give myself away. Thank you, praise and worship team, for leading us in such an intimate time of communion with our Lord. Wow. So good to be in the house of the Lord. And while we're greeting each other here in person, I want to focus on you that are joining us online in worship. I'm so glad that you're joining us today, that you're able to just worship the true and living God with us. And I pray wherever you are, you feel God's presence strong and rich in your heart. And I just so look forward to this word that God has for us this morning and just continuing in this spirit of worship. And I know there are some faces here that are glad to see each other and we can keep doing this all day. All day. All day. All day. All day, right? <laughs> Bless the Lord. Oh, let me give you a hug. Wow. What a time of leading us into worship. Thank you so much. So much. Well, church, if we can go ahead and release the children and the youth, be blessed in your time together this morning. And for all of us that remain, if we would at this time take our seats as we continue in worship. You know, we sang the song, and part of the lyric that really stood out to me that spoke to my heart and I want us to continue proclaiming that all I am is yours right all I am is yours but I also want to prophesy over you right now and say I am is yours we are in him and he is in us amen amen what a comfort to know that we are in fellowship with the one true God. Amen. Well, good morning, Grace Christian Family Church, and happy Sunday. happy Sunday. Amen. So glad to see all of you. And, you know, the book of Romans tells us to rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. And, you know, we've had many triumphs this week, I'm sure, but we've also had some challenges and some things that are heavy on our hearts. And right now, you know, one of our family members um, is experiencing a loss and you know I just want us to continue to pray for Scott and Rachel and their family as you know his mom has gone on to be with the Lord and I just want us to be connected and just continue to just lift each other up because we don't all only belong to him but we belong to each other amen amen amen, amen. well I hope you've been looking at what God has done all right you've been looking back at what God has done what a great word last week that Pastor Mike delivered that really just spoke to my heart. And not only are we looking back, hopefully, but we're also testifying, letting people know what God has done, how good God is in our lives. Hope we've been fanning those flames. Hope we've been keeping that spirit alive in us. Now, I pray that you've also been actively engaging in our mission for 2024. We're growing deeper than before in 2024. Amen? Amen? Amen. Well, today we're starting a new series that's titled Rooted. And as God's children, we are called to let our roots grow down deep in his love. Tell your neighbor, go deep. Go deep. Amen. Now, as a young man, one of my favorite things to do was to throw the football around with my friends, play catch, right? I still love to do that. Something I enjoy doing with my, my sons. We go to youth camp. We throw the football around. But, you know, not only did we throw the football around when we were young, we also would have pickup games, right, you know, where we'd have teams and, you know, you'd have the quarterback huddle everybody up. And then the quarterback would say, all right, I want everybody to go deep. <laughs> and there would be times when we would go deep and the connection wasn't made. The pass didn't get there. We didn't receive it. And this happened for a few reasons. Maybe it was because the quarterback didn't make the connection. Maybe the quarterback didn't stay in the pocket and the quarterback got sacked. Or maybe he threw an errant pass. Or maybe it was the receiver's fault. 
the receiver didn't run the right route. Or maybe the receiver has butterfingers and couldn't catch a cold in Alaska. Who knows, right? But, beloved, how many know that we have a quarterback that's calling us to go deep? And he never leaves us or forsakes us. There is no error in him. And his eyes are always on us. Because the Bible tells us that the eyes of the Lord are always watching the righteous. And he wants us to receive, catch everything that he has for us. And our route is written in his holy word. And we just got to run that route. And we need to huddle up with him like we did this morning in that wonderful time of praise and worship. Huddle up with him and open our hearts to receive. And in order for us to receive, we have to grow our faith so we can advance the ball. And what's the ball? This gospel. And our growth is determined by how we are rooted in his love. Just like plants need to have strong root systems that serve as their strong foundation, we need to have a strong foundation that's rooted in Jesus. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, I want you to stand with me at this time as we read our main passage, which is in Luke chapter 6, verses 46 to 49. If you're ready, tell me I'm open. I'm open. All right. So why do you keep calling me Lord when you don't do what I say? I will show you what it's like when someone comes to me, listens to my teaching, and then follows it. It is like a person building a house who digs deep and lays the foundation on solid rock. When the floodwaters rise and break against the house, it stands firm because it is well built. But anyone who hears and doesn't obey is like a person who builds a house right on the ground without a foundation. When the floods sweep down against that house, it will collapse into a heap of ruins. Thank you for standing with me as we read God's holy word. May you be blessed for it. You may be seated. Now, Luke chapter 6 contains an account of the Sermon on the Mount. You ever heard of that sermon? A familiar sermon. I'm sure you have. Now, starting from verse 17, Jesus and his disciples, they'd come down from the mountain. And they stood on a, a large level area. In geographical terms, we'd call that flatland or a plain or Florida. <laughs> and where they were located, the Bible says many of his followers were with them and a large crowd surrounded them. And people had come from all over Judea, Jerusalem, and as far north as the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon. And they came to hear him speak. This morning, I hope you didn't come to hear me speak. I hope you came to hear our Lord speak through me and through the leading of the Holy Spirit. And many came in that crowd to be healed, to be healed. And in this sermon, Jesus addresses their condition, their conduct, their character, and their construction. He addresses their condition by healing everyone, it says in Luke 6, 19. Healing power went out of him, and people were healed. If I could just touch the hem of his garment. He then turns to his disciples in verse 20 and addresses their conduct. He shares the Beatitudes. You know that, right? Blessed are the poor, for they shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the hungry, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted, and so on. And to cover all the bases, he also foretells of sorrows that are to come. He says, woe unto you that are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for you shall hunger, and so on. He then addresses the character traits of a disciple. How many people want to be a disciple? Raise your hand. Yeah, we want to be a disciple. If we're followers of Jesus Christ, we are called to be disciples, right? Now, disciples are to love their enemies. You know, there are a lot of unlovable people out there in the natural, right? But we're called to love our enemies. We're also called to produce good fruit. 
And here's one. Here's one that we sometimes don't pay attention to. We're not to judge others. <laughs> you know, the Bible even says that if we call someone an idiot, that's a sin. And we like to say that flippantly sometimes. You idiot. But that's not the trait of a disciple. Now, I can imagine all the people that had gathered around, they'd be wondering, okay, well, I don't want to be woe unto me, so how do I avoid these woes and get the blessings of godly character instead? Well, this is our focus today in verses 46 through 49, where Jesus addresses their construction. Somebody tell your neighbor, God's building something. Amen. And if you want to be rooted in the love of Jesus Christ, you have to lay a strong foundation. Does anyone want to be rooted in a strong foundation? Amen. 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 So it says in verse 46, so why do you keep calling me Lord when you don't do what I say? Hmm. I know that sticks somebody somewhere where it hurts. Now, Jesus is calling these people out, calling those people out that talk a good game, but don't walk the walk. Many may look the part, but their hearts are far from Jesus. They are not rooted and laying a strong foundation. Beloved, Jesus is saying, those who lay, trust and obey. Let's look at Matthew 1, 21 through 23. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who are actually doing the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me. You break God's laws. Wow. You know, on average, roughly 25% of the population in America attends church. That's roughly 80 to 85 million people every Sunday going to church. And over 60% of Americans identify as being a Christian. That's over 200 million people. Well, at least that's what they say. I'm a Christian. I identify with Christianity. But Jesus doesn't desire lip service. He requires servitude. Servitude. We are to serve him. Now, we've all heard the saying, if it talks like a duck, if it walks like a duck, then it's a duck. Right? Right? But that doesn't apply to being a true disciple. Let's look at Luke 6, 45. 40, 44 to 45. It says, a, true, a tree is identified by its fruit. Figs are never gathered from thorn bushes, and grapes are not picked from bramble bushes. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. Now, last Sunday, we had our youth brunch um, after church you know we have this to just build camaraderie amongst the youth and to just connect with them and and um, just have fellowship and we started a conversation about veggie burgers somehow veggie burgers right and there was a case being made that veggie burgers are very good <laughs> it's true right you know Alexis even pulled up some YouTube videos to, to show us how to make burgers with black beans. Black beans. I mean, black beans. I mean, even thinking about it, my stomach's turning. But, you know. And sometimes they even look good. It looked like the real thing. You would probably think it was, man, that's a good-looking burger. They look the part of meat. And, listen, if veggie burgers is your thing, knock yourself out. All right, but I've tasted and seen, <laughs> and it ain't good. All right, that's my opinion. See, I, I need meat on my burger, right? You know, 
I'm all for calling it something else, a vegetable roll or something. But don't call it a burger. It's not a burger, okay? Don't put brown grass on a bun and call it a burger. Uh Uh-uh. You see, we can't dress up our Christianity on Sundays or in certain spaces and call it discipleship. Mm -mm. See, true disciples need to be all in, all the time. It's a lifestyle. Let's look at the first disciples in the Bible and how they were all in. Matthew 4, 18 to 22. One day, Jesus, one day as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, throwing a net into the water. For they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. A little further up the shore, he saw two other brothers, James and John, sitting in a boat and their father Zebedee, repairing their nets. And he called them to come too. They immediately followed him, leaving the boat and their father behind. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. Notice here that these men are in their vocation, doing their job. They're living how they put food on the table. Imagine if Jesus came to the library, Arsenio. You know, you got Caden, and you know, you got to feed that, that um, bundling joy. And Jesus said, as you're in the library, come, follow me. It's like 2 o'clock. You got, what, about two, three hours left before you can actually punch out. And you just leave. Don't say anything. Just, just head out, not worrying about where the paycheck's coming from next week. But you just leave and go right or imagine this Paul now I'm gonna use Paul as an example because I don't know how many you know that Paul has you know several kids the four-legged type and if Jesus called Paul and said come follow me leave those hounds behind he might have a hard time doing that he shared a story this morning how you know he woke up and you know it's a little cooler this morning for us Floridians it's like freezing right and he had to take uh, his little shih tzu outside you know because it'd be a while before he came home and he just explained how she was not trying to have it she was not trying to go out in the cold and he made sure that she got to go out and relieve herself because he loves her she's dear to him think about this I'm sure these disciples love their job they love their family. But immediately, that's what the Bible says, immediately they left their vocation, their way of making a living. They left the family that we love. they love. You see, a fruitful disciple does what Jesus says. That's why they did it, because Jesus said it. And when we do what Jesus says, we will see our lives being rooted in Jesus so we can lay a strong foundation for our lives to be built on. Amen? Amen. Verse 47 says, I will show you what it's like when someone comes to me, listens to my teaching, and then follows it. Beloved, Jesus will show us. He'll show us. But we have to be active participants in the process. So my second point, let us develop your character so you can build a strong foundation. We got to develop it. We can't just say we are saved. I'm good now. Check the box. I'm making it into heaven. No. This process of sanctification has to occur. And the only way for that to occur is for us to follow the instruction in Romans 12 too. What does it say? Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. We have to learn God's will for us. And there's a process. What are we talking about here? We're talking about rooted to lay a strong foundation. Now, I love gardening. Many of you may know, and um, I'm sure some of you in here love gardening. Pastor Michael, I think, has picked up that 
um, gardening bug and is sharing with me, you know, these different things he has growing and everything. But we can learn a lot from the transformation of a seed into a plant. Let me explain. You see, you put a seed into the soil, and over time, what occurs? Something grows, right? Something grows up out of the ground, and above the surface, you see this thing that has grown. But the real work is happening underground, under the soil, where we can not see it, through a thing called the root system. Now, the root system is a crucial part of a plant's growth and development. It's vital for it to be able to be stable and to receive the nutrients that promotes growth. It is a network of roots that originates from the base of the plant stem and extends into the soil. Now I'm going to get a little geeky here, so bear with me. You see, the root system anchors the plant in the ground and performs four essential functions. Number one. Anchorage. Anchorage. You see, the primary function of the root system is to anchor the plant securely in the soil. And this anchorage provides stability, preventing the plant from being easily uprooted by wind, water, or other external forces. Remember, we're talking about laying a strong foundation. When storms of life come, we can stand. When things happen in our lives, that don't go as planned, we can stand. So the first fun function, anchorage. The second function is absorption of water and nutrients. How many people like to eat? Come on, only two of y'all like to eat? How did you make it to church this morning, huh? Are we still fasting? <laughs> we all like to eat, not only because our taste buds get a kick out of it, but because it's necessary to live, right? We like to eat, and we like to drink in order for us to receive the hydration that we need. You see, the roots absorb the water. That's the roots. They absorb the water and the essential nutrients from the soil. There are fine hair-like structures called root hairs. Anybody ever pulled up a root, and you see those little root hairs hanging on there? I wish I could, like transplant some root hairs so I could have some hair, but it doesn't work that way. All right. So these root hairs, they increase the surface air of the roots and they facilitate the absorption of the water and minerals. And these minerals are necessary for the plants to grow and, again, geeky, perform the metabolic process. Okay? So that's the second function. The third function is storage. Now, I know a lot of us have storage of our own. You know, you're carrying it here, there, I don't know where else you're carrying it. But the third function is storage. You see, plants store so they can reserve food materials, such as carbohydrates in their roots. And these stored resources can be tapped into during periods of drought or when the plant requires additional energy for growth, flowering or fruiting. You know, like if you're working out, you got to bulk up on carbs, right? Or if you're an athlete and you, and you have a, a contest, you might eat like, 10 pounds of spaghetti, right? So you have all that stored up, stored up energy that you can use for your functions. So we have anchorage, absorption of water and nutrients, storage, and then the final one is transportation. Transportation. You see, root tissues are involved in the upward transport of water and dissolve nutrients from the soil to the rest of the plant. And this process is essential for maintaining the plant's hydration and supporting various physiological functions. What's my point? There's a lot going on beneath the surface, good and bad. Many times we see people walking around with glum look, not happy, woe is me, and we dismiss it as some superficial thing. But we don't know what's going on under the surface. We don't know what's going down in their soil of their hearts. We don't know if their root system is working properly. And the only way for a root system to work properly when it is attached to the true and living vine. Now, if we want God to develop our character, we got to spend time in the soil. We got to spend time with Jesus. Now, as a pastor, I have a responsibility 
to prepare the word and, and share the word and, and preach. And, you know, that's a responsibility I take seriously, and that's a responsibility that I must perform. But you know what's even more of a responsibility that I have? Not to preach the word as much as allow God and the Holy Spirit to preach the word to me. Because I'm not just up here to say things. I'm up here to give an account. I'm up here to testify. I can't re reproduce if it's not of my own kind. And neither one of us can. You know, there are a lot of people who have a lot of head knowledge and Bible knowledge. But test the fruit. Test their lives. And you, and you hear a different story. So I have to spend time at Jesus' feet, like we all do. Let's look at an example of someone in the Bible who exemplifies spending time at Jesus' feet. Luke 10, 38 to 42. As Jesus and the disciples continued their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Mary, excuse me, Martha, welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken away from her. So here we have Martha running around, taking care of business and being a good host. Yes, we have to do the work of ministry. And the foundation of that is letting Jesus do his work in us. Because we can't do ministry out of our own strength. You know what you call doing ministry out of your own strength? Running around. If we want to make an impact for the kingdom, we have to do ministry in God's strength. You see, therefore, our location, learning, and lifestyle determines how rooted we are. We got to be at Jesus' feet. We can't just be sitting there off in the space and sort of passing time. I know no one's in here right now just passing time. Man, when is he going to be over, man? I got a brunch to go to at first watch. No, none of us are doing that. So we can't just be passing time. No, we have to be learning. And then we should turn our learning into lifestyle. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, are we taking the time to sit at Jesus' feet? Just ponder that for a second. And here are a few more questions to ponder. Are we learning who he is and falling deeper and deeper in love with him? Are we compelled to embrace his godly character? And is that embrace showing up on the outside like the plant or like the seed that was put into the soil? Are we seeing growth? Are we seeing something bloom? Or are we pitching our tent like Lot? Not looking at the beauty of his holiness, but like Martha, looking at the distractions in life. And there are many distractions in life. And a distraction doesn't necessarily have to be a sin. But a distraction is anything that takes our focus away from being rooted in Jesus' love. See, Martha's desire to be a good host, that's a good thing. Her desire to make a nice meal for Jesus. That's a good thing. So in and of itself, those aren't sinful things. But if they cause her to be distracted and hinders her to be like Mary, what was Mary doing? Mary was being still and knowing that there is God. There is God. And I want, I want to learn from him. I want to know him better. I want to take the opportunity to smell the roses. I want to be in 
the moment. Remember Jesus said in verse 42 that there is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. Beloved, laying a foundation built in Jesus can never be taken away from us. It doesn't matter what storm of life comes. It doesn't matter what health issue you may be faced with right now. It doesn't matter what financial situation may be going on. It doesn't matter if it's January 21st and there's already more month left than money to pay the bills. It does not matter how overbearing your boss may be at work. No, none of that matters. None of that can take that foundation away from us. James 1.25 says, but if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Beloved, Jesus supplies the perfect provision. We need only to persevere. What's the key to obeying God's law? I've said this before. Obeying God's law. <laughs> it's no mystery. Like Nike, just do it. Of course we need his strength. Of course we need his Holy Spirit to empower us. But there's no trick to it. Just do it. The key to trust and obey is to trust and obey. Now, anybody ever um, bought furniture from Ikea? Anybody? Ikea. Alexis, I know you've been, you know, furnishing the house and doing your Ikea thing. And, you know, my wife and I, when, you know, we were younger and had young kids and, you know, had to get furniture for the house, we went to Ikea a lot. I mean, Ikea is like a set up, right? You enter this nice, big, colorful building, blue and yellow, right? And you enter into the showroom. And then they funnel you along all these different prepared rooms and spaces. And you're just thinking, wow, I could do this. I could put that here. Man, I could get really creative. I could do a lot of stuff with, oh, my goodness. I can't wait. I, can't, I know you're probably make, fixing up Caden's room. And you're like thinking, okay, we can have this there. We can have that there. Ooh, we could get um, this blue black backdrop. Oh, I can't wait to go back. Let's go back. And we go through the showroom. And then we write down all the item numbers, right? Write down all the item numbers. Like, oh, I can't wait, man. This is going to be beautiful. It's going to be gorgeous. And then you get to the place where the furniture is. And instead of getting your nice-looking furniture that was all beautifully displayed, you get these flat boxes. And you're, like, scratching your head. What am I supposed to do with this? I mean, I was inspired before to be an interior decorator, not a carpenter. And so you get your boxes, put them in your vehicle, and you're wondering, how in the world did this fit in here, right? And then you open the box up, and you realize how, because it's in a million pieces, right? I know you've been there, right? And so you're there. You've already opened it up. The instruction manual has about a 1,000 steps on it, and you're like, well, pfft, I'm already in now, so i got to finish it. And then weeks later, you finally finish it. And then you got like a bunch of pieces left over. You're like, what is that? They sent me extra stuff. I, I, I don't know. And then you're like, man, I'm never doing that again. And then somehow you bump your head and you find yourself back at Ikea going through the trap, right? <laughs> now, if we can go through all that for a bunk bed, surely we can put in the effort to build our life on Jesus. You know, verse 48 says, it is like a person building a house who digs deep and lays the foundation on solid rock. You see, the foundation we are laying is our forever home. We're laying a foundation for our forever home. We're not building on a rental property that we have to part with soon. You know, our lease is up. I got to figure out what I'm going to do next. No. This is our forever home. And you think differently when you're building stuff for a house you own, even more so if it's your forever home. Because a house you own, you might say to yourself, well, I'm going to sell it in a few years when 
you know, my family um, expands. Our CEO and Samantha are probably already thinking it through when their other eight kids arrive, you know. <laughs> they're going to, our CEO is like, eight? Bro, I can't handle one. What are you talking about? <laughs> But the, but the difference between a rental property and a home that you have is vast, but even more so your forever home. This is a space that's yours, that you're going to pass down to your offspring, that you're going to have in the family, right? This new life, beloved, that we have, this new life that we have, this is our forever home, not this body but this new life that we have that we'll continue to build on in this process called sanctification. And in this new life that we're building, we should occupy our energy and our time building it. Jesus should be our focus. You know, Colossians 3.3 says, Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, Set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ and God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. Beloved, a godly foundation will last a lifetime and echo throughout eternity. This is another benefit of being rooted to lay a strong foundation. We have so much to look forward to. But guess what? <laughs> we have so much to enjoy and receive right now. That abundant life that God promises us isn't afar off. It's in our midst. And for us to access as much of it as we can, we have to be rooted to lay a strong foundation. Question, how many people have a cell phone? Lower your hands if you have a sang song, because I don't want any um, accidents in here. <laughs> Again, how many people have a cell phone, right? <laughs> All right. Sorry, but sorry for that. But your cell phone, you tap into probably 5% of its capability, and that's being generous. Your cell phone is like a mini computer. The thing you hold in the palm of your hand can do more things than the supercomputer that once existed. But we tap into such a small percentage of it. And as believers, we tap into such a small percentage of the power that we have in God, of the experience that God wants us to have, of the authority that we are able to claim, of the functionality as a true disciple. And I'm guilty of it too. And that's not a condemnation. That's an encouragement. Imagine when you're told, like, you get the, 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 the new model, right? The new model can do this, 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 and this. You're all excited. Oh, you're standing outside waiting, you know, 6 in the morning. Oh, the new phone is dropping. I'm here. You know, you're sleeping out in the tent. You got people doing all sorts of things like that just to get this little gadget because it has all these features. You're not a gadget. No. You're of a royal priesthood, and you have all these features in Christ, all these spiritual gifts, all these wonderful things that are deep inside of you that God wants you to tap into so you can lay that strong foundation, so you can be rooted in his love. And it's a joyous thing to realize and just ponder, man, I'm rooted in God's love. When you think about it, you start to say what the psalmist says in Psalm 1. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. You know, sometimes I have people come from up north, the family, and 
you know, they are like throwing it back, like, whoa, you, you have fruit trees? You can go outside and pick coconuts? I mean, whoa, that's like, wow, they're just like mind blown. And we have that in South Florida. But we have something much greater. We're a tree planted by the riverbank. We're a tree that can produce much fruit for the glory and honor of God. And this is our inheritance. This is what we have available to us. This is the building materials we're working with, the latest foundation, people. Now, we don't want to be like those people that Jesus spoke to in his Sermon on the Mount. You know, he addressed and talked about all the blessings, but he was sure to tell about all the woes, all the things that will happen to you if you don't lay that strong foundation. We want to avoid that. Even as believers, we can be guilty of building our house on sinking sand. And the way for us to avoid that and get the blessings of constructing our life on the rock is by trusting God, obeying God, doing what his word says. Because we don't want to build our lives on shaky ground like the wicked described in the rest of the psalm, in Psalm 1, it says, but not the wicked, Psalm 1, 4 to 6. They are like worthless chaff, scattered by the wind. They will be condemned at the time of judgment. Sinners will have no place among the godly, for the Lord watches over the path of the godly, but the path of the wicked leads to destruction. You're either in God's construction business or God's destruction business. I don't know about you, but I want to be in the construction business. I want to be building my life on the solid foundation. I want to be living my, building my life on the rock. I want to be so rooted in him when things come in our, my life that I'm not blown to and forth, right? And I'm sure we all say that. Amen? Amen. Now, since we have confessed our need for a Savior, I'm a sinner. I need you, Lord God. And we believe that Jesus is Lord. We're saved. We're saved. But remember, it's not about just checking the box and I'm good. You know, that's one of the things young people like to say nowadays. I don't know if I'm getting an old fogey because I keep saying things young people like to say nowadays. <laughs> well, yeah, I went to the store the other day. It was like, oh, man, I'm sorry I didn't put in my code. It's like, oh, you're good. It's like, you're good. Oh, I'm sorry I hit you in the face. Now you're good. It's like everything. You're good. You're good. No, we're not good for just being saved. Because we're saved by grace, yes, grace alone, not of works. But if we want to stand strong, if we want to live a transformed life, if we want to represent Jesus to the best of our capability, to the faith, the measure that he's given us, we have to allow Jesus to lay that strong foundation. If we want to do more than talk the talk, we have to allow Jesus to build that strong foundation. If we want to grow our ability to be victory after victory, walking in triumph after triumph, we have to allow Jesus to build that strong foundation. We must be rooted in him so we can lay that strong foundation. So, beloved, my charge to you, my encouragement to you is to continue to be rooted in Christ. So you can build your life on the strong foundation so that when trials come your way, you're standing strong and you're receiving all that he has for you. Thank you and God bless you. Beaver. Check, 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 check. Just kidding. Oh, JK, JK, JK. Be rooted. Anybody want to be rooted in the Lord? Amen. Thank you for that word, Pastor Marlon. Um, I do have a couple announcements for you. And you're just in luck. I'm not giving the first one. I would like to welcome Auntie Judith up to the stage. See how that works? Yeah.
Good morning, church. I'm going to be very, very quick. So as we plan our New Year's resolutions with our new plans and new goals, why not include the children of our church? So as we sang this morning, where I give myself away so that you can use me, why not be used in the children's church? God blesses sacrifice. Let us build a village of spiritual aunts and uncles and fathers to help our children. Let us help them to lay a strong foundation so that they themselves can handle life's problems. And guess what? Life's problem doesn't wait until you're 20. It can start at a month or a day. Yeah. So if you have a passion to serve, the children's ministry will be having an interest meeting on the 28th. You can talk to me, Miss Valerie, Pastor Michael, and of course, put it this way. If you're feeling unappreciated at your job, come here. Come volunteer and let us appreciate you here. What a word. <laughs> what? I was like, yeah, okay. And to be fair, Auntie Judith is not my actual aunt. She's not related to me in any way, shape, or form. However, when I was a wee lad, <laughs> she was here serving. And so if you have an interest, if God has laid it on your heart, maybe you have skills, uh, talents, and abilities to bless our church, to bless the children's ministry, please see Miss Judith, Pastor Michael, Miss Valerie. Um, honestly, you can see you can see anyone because we love our church and we're going to make sure our, our children's ministry is well supported. You know, I was on Facebook and um, there was this post that was like, I built my admin skills by serving in the church. I built my public speaking skills by serving in the church. I built my ministry skills and playing and doing all that stuff by serving in the church. This is such a great uh, environment to not only serve the Lord, give back to the community and serve your church family, but to really build those skills that God has already put inside of you um, for his glory. Amen? Amen? All right, on to our next announcement. Refresh. So, um, we have been planning, and Melinda has been just like hit the ground running uh, with a wonderful opportunity for business women to get together to uh, study, to fellowship, to be one mind, focus on the Lord, um, network, do all of those things together. And so we're having our first refresh meeting Saturday, January 27th. It will be every fourth Saturday from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And so if you are interested, please see Melinda. There's an evite, so you can RSVP on there, or you could just talk to her directly. Melinda, can you wave your hand to the people? Wonderful. So if you are interested in just coming together, fellowshipping, food, um, studying the word, yes, studying the word, just being together, networking, please see Melinda for our refresh. Um, that's again happening on Saturday, January 27th, right here, which is great. So y'all know how to get here. I didn't even have to put a, an address. Yes, and please invite other businesswomen. It's not just for our church. It is open to businesswomen alike. So please come and uh, so that we can have a good time to fellowship. And again, it's right here in our church. You don't even need an address because you're sitting right here. Okay, I'm just saying, you know where it is. Um, our profile updates. Okay, so y'all have done a great job. I have so much information on all of you. I minus, I'm not selling your information, I promise, okay? I just need your information for our records, and I simply need your name, your birthday, uh, your email, and your phone number. Simple as that. So I know a lot of you have already updated your information. And if you've been receiving our church text, I know that you're in our system. And if you have not, you can see this girl right here um, to update your information. And I'll get you squared away uh, because word on the street is we had some January birthdays. And do you know how I knew that? By looking at the church information. So please, please make sure that you see me 
and update your information. Or you can see Alex, please wave your hand, um, in the back after service. And he will also get your information updated as well. All right, there are three ways to give. Uh, again, I keep emphasizing this because we do have a church phone number now, which is super exciting. Technology is cool. You can text GIVE to 866-693-7754, and that will send you a giving link. Or you can give in the back of the sanctuary or the um, lobby. And then you can also give online on our website, gracecfc.org. Awesome, wonderful. Uh, go ahead and follow us on Facebook. And while you're at it, you might as well follow us on YouTube. Let me, I, I share this every week, but I, it's because I go through the videos and I'm like looking at the comments. But people who don't go to our church are subscribed to our YouTube channel, which means that they are getting the word on a weekly basis. Isn't that crazy? And like people are in the comments saying, man, I'm just, this is such a blessing. Man, I really needed this. Man, I really needed to hear this. The Lord is using our talents and the way that we do church to bless other people so that they can know him. Like, that's more people in the kingdom. Our prayers that those people get saved and are with us in heaven one day. But, like, it's because we're active on social media. Uh, I love that. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, you know, I'm a techie, so I get a, I get a little too excited. I get a, technology. Thanks, Arsenio. Thanks. I missed you. Um, I did. <laughs> and um, finally, as a reminder, our theme for this year is growing down. I started uh, praise and worship with that scripture, Ephesians 3, 16 through 18. Our goal is that we grow down in the Lord's love so that we can be strong. So as you go throughout your week, I pray that you be reminded to have your firm foundation in Jesus, because he is really the only firm foundation, and continue to grow deep in his love. Um, before I close, I just want to say hello to everybody that we missed you all. If you have not been here, we love you guys. We love you. You are so missed. You are so desired to be here. Thank you for coming. We love you. I cannot say that enough. I just was so excited when I came to church and saw so many people I haven't seen. Um, thank you for coming. We love you. We are a family, and you are cared for. You are loved. You are just so needed here, and so thanks. We love you guys. Okay, go ahead and stand. Oh, no, I was a little out of breath. I, it, it's a workout up here, y'all. Wow. <laughs> Father God, Lord, I thank you so much for the joy, for the peace, and your presence that we've had to, that we've gotten to experience here today. God, I pray that as we go, we're reminded that um, in order to grow, we need to surrender our lives to you, surrender our issues, surrender our desires and pick up what you have for us, Lord. I pray that we remember to grow down into your love, build that firm foundation, and continue to be more like you. Um, protect us as we go, Lord. I pray that everyone here um, gets to experience your sweet love this week. In your name I pray, amen. amen. Have a happy Sunday.